Today we're going to talk about the law of sines. So we spent um, a really long time solving different types of right triangles using our trig skills. So this unit is going to have us start transitioning, be able to be using our trig skills to actually solve any type of triangle, which means non-right triangles. And the first way to do this is called the law of sines. So you notice in this picture here, we have our triangle. It is clearly not a right triangle. We've got angle A right here. The side opposite of angle A is side A. Right, it's across from it or opposite. We've got angle B. The side opposite of angle B is just B. And we've got angle C across from it is C. So the law of sine is the sine of angle A divided by the side length of A equals the sine of angle B divided by the side length of B, which equals the sine of angle C divided by the side length of angle C. So it's gonna be a ratio or a proportion that we're making up here. With this proportion, we're gonna be able to cross multiply and solve and find all different missing pieces. So you're gonna be able to solve for missing sides, missing angles, and a combination of all of them. So here's our first example. We've got our triangle here. We're gonna solve the triangle for side C here. So when we do this, we're looking for connections where we have the same side and its corresponding angle. So when I look over here, I've got this 24. Its corresponding angle is 43. So I would start this problem off by saying sine of 43 degrees divided by its corresponding side, which is 24 equals. Now we're trying to find side C. So we need to know its corresponding angle, which is right here. But we are not given that information, but we can use our triangle skills to help us out. We know that all triangles add up to 180. And we're given two angles, so we can subtract those two angles to find our third and missing piece, which is 57 degrees. So now I could say the sine of 57 degrees over its corresponding side, which is C. So you've created your ratio here, and now what we're, we're going to cross multiply and solve. So my first round of cross multiplying will be the sine of 43 times C times the sine of 43 equals, and then 24 times the sine of 57. Now our goal is to get the C by itself, and right now it is not. It is attached with that sine of 43. So how do we get rid of the sine of the 43? We divide. So we're gonna divide by the sine of 43. So what we're typing into our calculator is 24 times the sine of 57. Make sure you close that parenthesis in your calculator. Divided by the sine of 43. And again, close that parenthesis. And just like we did for our trig unit, let's round it to two decimal places. When you put it in the calculator, you're going to get that C equals 29.51. And that is your first problem of law of sine. Let's try another one. Our next one here, we're going to solve for angle A. So now we're trying to find a missing angle. So again, we're looking for a combination where we know the side and its corresponding angle. So I see one side here, we've got this 34. Its corresponding angle is 82. So I could say the sine of 82 degrees divided by 34 equals. Now we're trying to find angle A. So we're going to say the sine of angle A divided by its corresponding side. Well, its corresponding side is this 27. And again, once we have our proportion, we're gonna cross multiply. So I'm gonna say 27 times the sine of 82. Equals 34 times the sine of A. Now our goal is to solve for A. We have two things that are standing in our way here. We have this 34 and we have the sine. So let's first get rid of the 34. How would I get rid of that 34? I would divide by it. So I've got 27 times the sine of 82 divided by 34 equals the sine of angle A. Now, if you recall, when we did our trig unit, when we don't know our angle or we don't know an angle, we have to do something special we have to do trig inverse. So what we're doing is we're gonna type this whole thing into our calculator right now. 27 divided by the sine of 82, close that parenthesis. Oh, sorry, so 27 times the sine of 82, close that parenthesis and then divide by 34. When I do that, I'm gonna get point, and we're gonna run to actually four decimal places here. Seven, eight, six, four. That equals the sine of A. 
And recall, when we don't know the angle, we use the inverse. So we're going to do sine inverse of that decimal. And when we do that, we get 51.85 as angle A. Once we have that, then we could use our rules of triangles out of 180, and we could easily find angle C, and then do the law of sines again to find the next part. So for this last portion here, we're going to solve for every missing piece. So we need to find every single side that's missing at every single angle. So let's figure out what we need to solve for here first. I'm saying that I am missing side RT. That's the only side I don't know. I'm missing angle R, and I'm missing angle S. So we have to figure out which of these we're going to find first. Now when I'm looking at this, I'm going to find my first like connection, my first one where I know it's side and it's corresponding angle. So I have this 40 degrees here. So it's going to be sine of 40 degrees divided by its corresponding side, which is 18, equals. And you have to see what else you know. We know this 12 here, which is a side. So that's going to be our bottom. We have to figure out which angle goes with that. All right, the angle across from it is this angle R. So we're going to find the sine of R first. So let's go ahead and cross multiply this. When I cross multiply, I'm going to do 12 times the sine of 40. So 12 times the sine of 40 equals 18 times the sine of R. We're trying to solve for R, so we have to get it by itself. So what's the first thing we have to get rid of? We have to get rid of that 18. And how do we get rid of that 18? We divide. So 12 times the sine of 40 divided by 18 equals the sine of R. The R still isn't by itself because we have to find the angle here. So we're going to type that 12 times the sine of 40 divided by 18 to our calculator, and we're going to round to four decimal places. So we get 0. 0.4285 equals the sine of R. When we don't know the angle, we have to do the inverse. So we're doing sine inverse of 0.4285, and we end up getting 25.37. So angle R is 25.37 degrees. Now that we know that angle, we can easily find angle S, because I can do 180 minus the 40 degrees minus the 25 0.37. When I do that, I end up getting 114.63. Finally, we have to find the side over here, RT. I'm going to call this side X here. All right, and you could also call it side S if you want, whatever you kind of prefer there. So now we're going to do law of sines again. I'm going to keep with my same first our ratio, so sine of 40 over 18 equals. Since we're trying to find this side here, this RT, right, we have to use its corresponding angle, which is the one we just found, which is 114.63. So sine of 114.63 divided by x, or s would it for you before. So let's go ahead and cross multiply. I have x times the sine of 40 equals 18 times the sine of 114. Our goal is to get this x by itself, so the only thing standing in our way is that sine of 40. So how do I get rid of that sine of 40? I divide by it. So I can just type that to my calculator. 18 times the sine of 114.63 degrees, close that parenthesis, divided by the sine of 40, close that parenthesis, and I get 25. Point four six, and now all of the missing pieces are solved for.